Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to wait on a few more folks. And will we see how many people are on the call? Yeah, so right now we have 12 people. Um, we're live um, with the community right now. It's 631. And um, though I'll have um, I have a printout of how many people are okay, great. for you at the end. Yeah, thank you.
Hi, everyone. Thanks for being patient. We're still waiting on a few other folks. Um, Karen or Dole, have you heard from Jim before we get started? I have not, not yet. I am going to call him. OK, well, to respect everyone's time, I think we should get started. It's almost 10 minutes after. Um, I don't want to hold up anyone. So. OK, so hi, everybody. My name is Ann Wynn. Um, I'm a landscape architect and planner, and I'm excited that you're available to join us tonight and learn more about the progress we've made in the final designs on Rutgers Bridge and Street Improvement Project. Um, while we're still waiting for others to join, I see that some of you have been using the question and answer box. Thank you. Um, we'll be trying to answer as we go, but to uh, to save some time, we'll probably go through the whole presentation and address questions at the end. Um, so if you have any questions, um, you can email Karen or I or use that link I just put in there to see um, this presentation. Um, I will see. Karen, would you add your, oh, actually I'll do it for you. So here's my email and Karen's email. So if you have any issues. Please email us. Right, well, I think we should get started. Um, so on the phone with me is with the city of Manitou is Karen Brechold and Dole Grebenik, and we're expecting some folks from uh, Urban Renewal Authority as well. Um, on the consultant side, you have, it's myself, and we're expecting our structural engineer, and um, we also have Yvonne Duman on the phone. Um, if you have comments that you don't think of during this time, you can also add them here um, on the web page. Okay, so this gives you uh, an idea of the timeline. Um, we are here, September 23rd, um, and We've been working on this since December 2018. And yeah, uh, this is Karen. Um, a couple of uh, folks who would like to join the meeting have said they're having trouble joining. Is there something we need to do to let the let some more people in? Um. It's open, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, let's see. Can you email them the Teams link? Yes, I will do or, that. Or um, Ivona has it too, so if you want to get it from Ivona or Ivona, can you send that to Karen? Thank you. OK. Um, and I guess. Is that you, Jim? No, this is Dole. I needed to join by phone. Oh, OK. All right, well, I guess we'll start without Jim. Sorry about that, everyone. Don't mean delay the presentation. Um, all right. So. Most of you are familiar with the project. Um, 
this Manitou Spring, Manitou Avenue, Rutgers Lane, and El Paso Boulevard. Um, so the city initiated the, the design of the replacement of the bridge in 2017. Um, this area is very active on both sides of the road uh, with the park on the left side and the ballpark on the right. Um, so Becker's Lane provides a southern gateway, as you know, to the Gardens of the Gods at its intersection of Manitou Ave. And the city intends not only to replace the bridge, but also to add landscaping, beautifying, and incorporating some sustainable design uh, while supporting this highly visible and busy roadway. Um, the creek trail is immediately north of the bridge, but uh, visibility is poor for bicyclists and pedestrians uh, trying to cross Becker's Lane at the juncture of the trail. The mobility, the mobility, this is the mobility summit that we attended in 2019, our first meeting to introduce this project um, to gather input on types of structures that might be preferred. And so we got a beam concrete bridge out of that. And at the next public meeting, we received feedback from you all on the materials and design of the bridge and streetscape layout. The preferred, there was um, major uh, concerns about safety and the need for sidewalks on both sides, not just one. And we would have to acquire land to have sidewalks at a minimum of four feet on each side. So as you can see, the existing streetscape does not have uh, sidewalks on either side. And to have uh, this, we would have to acquire 11 feet of right of way. The blue areas are where land was acquired to provide sidewalks. And uh, we worked closely with the property owners to make this happen. Okay, so this is a view looking north of on Becker's on Mantu Avenue. Um, so Mantu Avenue is behind us. Um, we have the ball field and the trail on the right. Uh, this is a narrow roadway, which is a good thing when we want traffic to slow down, but not safe when we cannot provide sidewalks to separate pedestrian and vehicular flows. You can also see that there's mismatch railings um, and the manholes are not in good shape. Uh, now we're looking east, standing at the creek elevation. The existing bridge does not clear the flow and currently overtopping the bridge. Um, we're proposing to make the bridge wider here for a more appropriate opening that will allow water to pass. Okay, here's another view of the bridge from the other side. I also want to point out the sanitary sewer underneath the bridge. Um, there's been concern from the city about the capacity of the sewer pipe, so this will be replaced. Um, and the water line, on the other hand, is buried under the bridge, so we'll relocate that next to the sanitary sewer under the bridge to allow for easier access, maintenance, and construction. So this layout shows the existing proposed bridge layout. Uh, we will be widening the bridge from 19 feet to 35. Um, a traditional railing and stone design was the preferred alternative that came out of that second public meeting. And this is the final bridge design. And as I mentioned, the bridge is now widened to allow for more water to flow. And we have sidewalks on both sides, new lighting, and new utilities. All right, now we're back on the existing bridge and road looking north where there's a lot of conflict with pedestrian vehicular traffic. Your sidewalk on the west side disappears and there's no sidewalk on the east side. Okay, we are further down now, Becker's Lane looking towards El Paso 
Uh, we have the skate park on the left and the ball field and parking on the right. Again, there's no sidewalk, um, so this guy has to walk on the road. Um, there's currently an open channel um, here, which means there needs to be a guard well, guardrail to keep it safe. Um, the new design, get rid of the channel and railing to and install a pipe and sidewalk. Okay, now we're looking south. You can see the health of the existing trees are being compromised because of the overhead power lines in this, fo in this photo. Um, the overhead lines are to be removed and all electric lines will be buried to avoid this issue in the future. So we are now looking east on El Paso. This is a photo taken during a rainstorm where you can see current drainage and ponding issues. You can see that water is flowing straight into the ballpark. And this project will address the drainage issues here. So this is the overall design. Um, I'll walk you through this again. Um, we're doing some major landscaping here and uh, here where and down here. Um, and revegetating areas that are disturbed during construction. Um, the trees on the west side are protected and the trees on the east side will be replaced with hawthorns and Tartarian maples. Um, there'll be a new water line, a new gas line, and a proposed storm sewer here and the electric lines. So this is a section that helps you understand um, the proposed design. We have the sidewalks on each side here. This is the parking lot on this side, and here's the park on this side. Proposed trees, new landscaping, and uh, there's some dimensions here so you can understand there are limitations. Um, <clears throat> the trees are, are not in the city boundaries, but the school boundaries. So the city will be providing permanent irrigation for all new landscaping. And there will be a root barrier right here to protect the tree and the pipe. Okay, so I think we should take some time to address some questions. I know we're, um, I think we have half an hour. Um, if you think I miss anything, Dan or Joel, please chime in. I don't know if Jim's on the phone yet. Uh, Ann, do you hear me? Oh, hey, Jim. I'm sorry, I couldn't log on for some reason. Other people have been having problems too. I've been getting emails. Oh, okay. Um, Hopefully, Karen, you were help, able to help. Uh, anyhow, um, if you want me to say anything about the Urban Renewal Authority, or, or, or I could do that now, or whenever that would be a good time. Sure. Um, I was just about to pull up the timeline again, and you maybe you can talk about how this project started and where we're at now, and um, you know how we would like to move forward in construction. I'm sorry, Ann. Uh, this is Karen. Can I just interject for a moment? We still have some people who aren't able to get in. Hmm. I mean, there's no limit on how many people can attend. Yeah, I had trouble. I could get on and anonymously. Oh, uh, but yeah. and I could hear you, but I I, I couldn't talk. Well, Jim, while I help others join, do you want to give that overview? Sure, I, I, I can do that. Um, hold on here. I don't know. I'm, I was trying to trying to download the app, but anyhow. Um, yeah, so anyhow, um, I'll just give an overview. Uh, this is Jim Reese. I'm the Urban Renewal Director, Executive Director for Manitou Springs. And just wanted to kind of give everybody a kind of a heads up as to how this project really evolved. And so 
um, the Urban Renewal Authority actually uh, was really formed back in 2006 and to foster reinvestment and investment in particular areas of the city. And so an urban renewal plan was drawn up for this particular area. Uh, it's called the East Manitou Springs Urban Renewal Area. And it was approved by city council in November of 2006. Uh, the boundaries roughly extend from the Garden of the Gods campground or, and the arch on Manitou Avenue uh, on the east end. On the south end uh, is Highway 24. And on the north is El Paso Boulevard. And then the western boundary would be basically the interchange uh, at Highway 24 as well. So Becker's Lane is kind of a smack dab in the middle of that area. Um, and we've uh, done other projects in that area already. Uh, we participated in the, uh, the West, West Side Avenue Action Plan. Uh, Urban Renewal put some money into that project and it was a, uh, a large group effort uh, and, and uh, did a lot of improvements on Manitou Avenue. Uh, we're also finishing up the Pocket Park right at the Arch. Um, we've also done some funding for the Holiday Inn Express uh, some of the infrastructure that's going to go in there right now. And then finally, we're working on Becker's Lane Bridge, um, which uh, really started back in 2016. Um, the city actually approached the Urban Renewal Authority to help fund repairs or replacement of the bridge. And as time went on, an engineering study was done, um, which the URA funded. And then eventually in 2018, OTAC was hired uh, to do the engineering design work, and they've been working on it ever since, and Ann's timeline kind of shows that. Um, and then uh, we had the original preliminary plans were done in the fall of last year uh, with a lot of public input, several meetings were held. And then finally this year, now 2020, um, we were ready to go to bid and have the public meeting and, and get moving with the project. And I know Ann's going to talk a little bit more about the timeline as where do we go from here. Uh, but that's kind of my update is just wanted to get everybody uh, kind of a history on how this project came about. Thanks, Jim. So we are working on the plans right now and hoping to give go out for bid in a few months. Um, I think I want to take this time to answer a few questions that's been um, people have been asking the last few minutes. Um, here's one from Rachel. Um, she want to make sure it's we're preserving the environment. What measures are being taken to not damage progress on the creek restoration, as well as creative solutions to keeping well-established growth preserved? Um, visibility is a concern. Is there an option for skinning your sidewalks or bike lanes plus a single lane used by folks moving opposite directions as they needed? Uh, more like a neighborhood street width. Um, okay, so I'll start with that. We do have water resource engineers working closely with Dan, our project manager and structural engineer to, uh, to work with uh, the creek and um, the Sidewalk isn't necessarily an issue. It's more about the underground sewer system that um, that's causing us to take out some of the trees there. Um, we can go back to these existing conditions. So um, here are the existing trees that are being removed. Um, they're being, and as I mentioned before, they're being compromised by this overhead electric line, and we're taking that underneath so that we don't have that problem after um, we have our new planting, and then we'll have permanent irrigation as well. And trees that are drought tolerant and do better in this condition. Um, Dan or Jim or Karen, if you or Dole, if you have anything else to add to that, um, please do. This is Karen. I'll, I'll just note that that the roadway itself will remain the same width, and so the only new impervious surface in this corridor is the new sidewalk that that is going in, 
and we we will have some more area for um, the new trees to absorb uh, water when they're um, located within this corridor and spaced out somewhat somewhat better to have a more expansive canopy along that um, along the east side of the street. Thanks, Karen. Um, Rachel had another question and she asked if there's been a number of injuries due to poor visibility. Does anyone have that stat? I, I am not aware of that. This is Karen. Uh, I will note that the design team is proposing to jog the trail up um, as it as it comes from the east side of the road, a little bit up the roadway, so that it improves site visibility um, for riders on the west side of the road. As they're, as they're heading east. I, I am not aware of okay. that. Okay, and uh, we have another question here. Noel asks, will there be signage pointing people toward Garden of the Gods? What about bike lanes? Dan, do you know if we're adding signage to Garden of the Gods? There's no signs. Uh, so Dan Bell's here, uh, project manager, and um, so there's no signs uh, formally set for Garden of the Gods. There is a public art um, process that we have not yet engaged on. There are no plans for bike lanes through here. This is uh, this project was really a balancing act of what can we possibly fit into a very limited corridor, and. Uh, um, People commonly walk along the, the inside the roadway right now. They'll have sidewalks on both sides, which will really help alleviate that congestion. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that up, Dan. We are excited about um, the public art aspect of the bridge. Um, there's going to be a lot of opportunities and uh, sculptural outdoor art um, in the future. And then Alan asks, how much lighting will there be? We already have too much light pollution from Manitou Ave. Will the lighting all be full cutoff lighting so that you don't destroy the serenity of our neighborhood? Um, so the scale of the lighting is pedestrian lighting. It's um, this, these posts. So I can go back to that. So they're, they're smaller scale. Um, I don't know, Jim or Dan, if you want to, if you have more details on the, the lighting. Yeah, so what I would say to lighting again, this is Dan, and uh, we've retained Clanton and Associates for the lighting. They're um, uh, an absolutely outstanding, award-winning lighting consultant that uh, is very, um, sensitive to the fact that we do not want to be creating a lot of um, light in a neighborhood that does not otherwise want it. But that being the case, the lighting along Becker's Lane is actually very deficient. And so there will be lights on the bridge and there will be lights along Becker's Avenue to bring it into code compliance with Manitou and uh, El Paso County. If you have follow up questions, please add it to the Q&A or or um, to the comments. So if you have access to this website that I added in the Q&A, there's um, a space down here where you can add your name and email and comment and we'll respond to that. You can also reach out to Karen or I directly. Um, so uh, Mary asked if the large cottonwoods or willows to be are they going to be removed on the west side? Um, no, they are all protected. All the trees on the west side are protected. Okay. How will the replacement lines affect the residents in the block north of the bridge?
Sorry, Can you Daniel. repeat that question? Um, how will the replacement lines affect the residents in the block north of the bridge? Maybe nine backwards. Yeah, they and should the not apartments. be affected. They should not be affected. It's a, a notable improvement along Becker's Lane that those overhead lines are all going underground. Um, it's a it's a very noted improvement along Becker's Lane. And it should not affect anybody adversely. And then another question from Noel. Um, the sidewalks in on the north side of El Paso, would they extend be extended all the way to the trading post? Um, that might Our be project, yeah. yeah uh, well, I'll just jump in that our, this project uh, starts and stops between Manitou Avenue and El Paso. And there will be comprehensive sidewalks on both sides of the road all through that corridor. And Rachel asked, um, can the lighting be the kind that only shines down on the street sidewalk so that the creek area remains dark? the down lighting. The lighting and unfortunately we don't have uh, uh, Clinton on board right now. They could speak in a lot more detail to the lighting, but the lighting that is incorporated is in accordance with uh, Manitou and Colorado Spring standards. Okay, question from Mary. Thanks, Dan. Uh, I see that smaller tree species were chosen when large canopy trees are growing now. There's room for some large canopy trees where other places in town is difficult. Lots of groundwater here, so drought tolerance really not needed in this location. Take advantage of it would be my suggestion. It's very cold in this area. So we do have smaller species um, because of the size of the median, but um, there are other species that are um, that would also do well and are also hardy. Um, that are also drought tolerant. So um, we can do a poll or I'll show some other alternatives that would also do well. So uh, swamp white oak would also do well in this area and has a larger canopy and it's also 40 feet. So that's another alternative that we can talk about as a team. Um, and black locust is another one um, that will also do well. We just want to be uh, safe and give the trees enough room to be happy. And so right now we were specifying um, hawthorn and Tartarian maple. And we'll put them in at four inch caliper so they're not going to be puny trees um, when we put them in. So that's something um, that, we, that we can easily change. Um, don't you think, Jim and Karen? And I, I know there's a lot of suggestion that sometimes putting in smaller trees is actually better for the tree. Putting in too big, they're not stable enough. They're too big for their small root system. So we'll have to look at that. Yeah, exactly. Um, thanks, Dole. So we'll look at that together. Um, but these are the trees that we are specifying right now, these hawthorns. Um, um, yeah, that's something we can talk about for sure. Yeah. I, I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of suggestion that when I'm putting in smaller trees is actually better for the tree. Putting in so someone said lighting impacts, deep tour impacts, sewer and water line impacts, noise and construction timeline. So construction, you know, wouldn't you say, Dan, is, 
would start if everything goes well in uh, late November and then be around six months. Um, I can pull up a traffic control. This is very conceptual. I'm not sure if you're concerned with the uh, pedestrian traffic or vehicular traffic, but we would route vehicles in this green. And um, people who are living at this property will have access and we'll, we'll allow pedestrian access here on El Paso and possibly through the parking lot. That's something that we need to discuss since that, that is not city property to, to route folks that are using the Creek Walk Trail. Um, we have another question. How much wider will the bridge be due to the sidewalks? So, Dan, wh where are we at now with the width of the, the bridge? So that's... You know, I should be able to answer that very quickly and easily. <laughs> it is wider. Uh, we do have sidewalks on both sides. Um, I, I'm afraid I, I don't recall offhand uh, um, the width of each sidewalk. They're around um, four feet on average. And so the bridge is consequently about eight feet wider. And so right now there's no sidewalks on the west side. And so where we're adding sidewalk to the west side, but holding that edge of bridge constant, you can get an idea of how much wider the bridge becomes towards the east. So there's a question for you, Jim, um, that the lighting is required by code. Um, can you promise that it will be the minimum requirement? Um, what was the question again, Ann? Um, someone's concerned about the, the lighting and was hoping that we can uh, specify the minimum requirement from the city, not just the minimum uh, amount of lighting to, to meet code. It will meet code and that will say um, objective of the lighting design was to meet code, but not exceed it um, any more than possible. Uh, wondering about the landscaping besides the new trees, are the plants pollinator friendly? Um, yes, we do have plants that are pollinator friendly. We have um, a lot of perennials uh, and evergreen uh, ground cover, um, sage and um, yarrow. So uh, they're drought tolerant and pollinator friendly. I um, have another question about lighting. The lighting from the city of Colorado Springs and their so-called standards is similar to prison perimeter. The lighting in the new section of the Manatee Ave is obtrusive and I object to design standards that were forced upon us. This is a residential park and residential area. I think it's more of a comment. Thanks, Anna. I don't like too much lighting either, but we are meeting code. Um, let's see any other questions coming in. Hey. 
Thanks for considering other appropriate species. Could trees be added along El Paso and by bleacher seeding to shade game watching as well? It's the hot barren strip. Um, this is outside our project boundary and um, city boundary. I mean, um, Jim, do you have, is there plans for, for that? No, we lost Jim. Because that's the school property, right, Dan? To the uh, northeast of the bridge is school property, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's all the questions we've received. Um, I'll give a few more minutes if anyone has any follow-up questions. Another question. How many street lights are there currently in the area? The answer to that is one. It's, uh, I believe, northeast of the bridge. And, um, and it's not sufficient um, with respect to code standards. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'm not sure how much wattage that one puts out, but it, um, I hope I don't get myself in trouble by saying this. I think it probably puts out more than what the new lights will. Um, I have another question saying, how realistic is the six month timeline given how long the Mantu Avenue project actually took? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a entirely different beast there. <laughs> um, a six month timeline is generally uh, on par with uh, what a project like this would take, and um, to a large part, uh, any given project is bound by the constraints of how much time you have to work with. In this particular case, uh, the the various hurdles that the contractor will have to clear have basically been uh, set in motion. And so it should be a blow and go operation with the possible hiccup of there are a lot of utilities that need to be undergrounded that are beyond the contractor's control. So there will need to be a lot of coordination between the contractor and the respective utility companies to make sure everything happens according to schedule. As far as the contractor getting his work done on time, that really should not be an issue between uh, um, the fabrication of the um, of the bridge beams, the uh, pouring of the concrete abutments, and so on and so forth. Six months is a perfectly reasonable time frame for that. Okay, and luckily it starts in late fall, so maybe. Um, the use of the area is a little less. Um, okay, so Mary has another question. I cannot tell by the pictures if rocks or gravel will be in the new landscapes. If so, I hope you would consider the excessive use of type of ground covers simply requires the use of herb herbicides in the future. Uh, we are mulching with uh, wood mulch and hay, so there's no uh, rock gravel um, in the landscapes. That's only mostly true, Ann. Uh, well, we have gravel um, at, I, I'll show you in the plan, <laughs> but not, not where we're uh, landscaping. So there's 
a little bit of it here next to the existing tree on El Paso where the um, the fire hydrant is. And then there's a strip of gravel here where we're putting a wall between the property and the sidewalk. So that's all the gravel. And, and these areas won't have planting either. And this area will be mulch and the, the new tree line area will be mulch as well. And the new landscape areas over here. Um, so will the visibility of the trail crossing be improved? Um, well, the alignment of the crosswalk is a little different. Yvonne, I don't know if you <coughs> or or Dan, if you want to talk more about the visibility of the trail crossing, because yeah, we I'd are be happy to. actually. It. Yeah, that uh, <laughs> going all the way back to an initial uh, uh, site review of the project, I. Uh, I almost wound up having to jump over the bridge into the creek <laughs> because uh, apparently some emergency call had come out and a police car came screaming down and uh, I couldn't see him, he couldn't see me and uh, it's quite a scary moment and that's um, been, been a, a, a prime directive of, of this project ever since is uh, to improve the sightline characteristics as you're making that at grade crossing. Um, so consequently we've pushed that crossing location further to the north. Um, it's a little bit out of the way if you like coming from the uh, the east and shooting straight across the road. I know there's not a whole lot of traffic, but if you're heading from the uh, west towards the east and uh, anybody that does that knows that you pretty much have to come to a complete stop if you're going to see anything. And um, so moving it to the north creates a much better sight line condition and uh, that's what we have in our current plan. Right and the old walkway was coming through here. This so this is going to be revegetated those pollinators and evergreens. Um, okay. We have a few more minutes for questions. Virginia says, I don't know if others have noticed the URA improvements on the east part of the Mantu Avenue are possibly the most barren. I'm very concerned that the same team is going to bring a concrete design deep into the park and residential area. Street lighting that is shown in this design from our community's experience will broadcast light broadly into the park and into the residential area. Um, I think Dan, you already um, talked about lighting and how we're just meeting, meeting to code, not kind of, not really overdoing, trying not to overdo it. And uh, we are not bringing concrete into the park. We're actually getting rid of the concrete in the park and adding more vegetation. So uh, hopefully, a better entrance to the park and a better entrance to the ballpark. This is such a wonderful improvement. Thank you. I like to plant the seed to continue beautification in down Becker's Tour Garden. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. Um, at the Columbia Street improvement, there is no sidewalk on the west side. Why wouldn't that option be considered rather than losing trees. Another option is to cut down some while planting replacements in the meantime. Um, like I said earlier, it's not the sidewalk that is that is really pushing the trees, it's the utilities and the current trees are, are not going to last long if we keep chopping the crown like that. If they don't have now, they don't. If you, if you chop their crown, they have um, less likely to live very long, and it becomes dangerous. Especially elms, they get really ratty, so it gets dangerous for uh, folks in that parking lot or or, or even using the roadway. Um, I don't know, Dan or anyone else, want to add to that? 
Yeah, I don't think there's anything else to add to that, except that I, uh, um, people do actively walk along the east side of Becker's um, in the roadway. And it, it really is a hazardous condition. And you've got that uh, guardrail that you could see there. And, um, and of course, it's not so easy as to just jump the guardrail and, uh, and you're on grass because there is that open channel ditch there, of course. And uh, this is, at the end of this project, this is gonna be so much more of a comfortable experience being able to walk along a raised concrete sidewalk. Um, the width between the, um, uh, the parking lot on the right and the, uh, um, the open channel flow right now will be somewhat reduced, but it will feel so much more comfortable being able to walk in that area and there will be um, complete vegetation uh, restoration through that area. They'll feel so much more comfortable. Thanks, Dan. Okay, we have time for a few more. Um, will Becker's Lane from Manitou Ave to the training post be repaved after the project is complete. Um, so the project doesn't go up to the trading post, it ends at El Paso. So that so it's only to Manitou to the trading posts that will be repaved. And I should say, uh, if, if I can be so bold as to uh, give a lot of kudos out to both uh, the city staff and URA, they, this project started off as only replacing the bridge, but they quickly came to realize the importance and prudence of improving all the corridor of Becker's Lane between Manitou and El Paso. And they seized on that and, uh, and embraced the necessity. And we've been moving forward ever since along that path. So, I mean, this, this, this whole thing was, is a rather drastic improvement from the initial uh, vision of only replacing the bridge. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that, Dan. I didn't mention that earlier when I talked about um, when the city came to the URA to uh, to make this happen. I mean, we we started out just adding a sidewalk or two on the bridge, but then it would just end again. So it wasn't really helpful for pedestrians and uh, bicyclists. Okay. Is there a planned crosswalk for the Midland Trail? The current proposed crosswalk are for parking access and sidewalk access only, as I see on the plan. How is traffic flow on the Midland Trail affected by this plan? If I could jump in on that, it, it should not be affected at all. One of the uh, uh, <laughs> I, I probably shouldn't say this, but regrets of the project. Um, Manitou and URA was very, very interested in creating a uh, great separated crossing for the creek walk uh, across Beckers. And that uh, just straight up was just not in the cards. Uh, it, it We just could not get that to work. And um, uh, so the essentially the at grade crossing right now will remain, albeit with improved sight lines. And it should not affect the flow. Right, because now you can you can even ramp down and back. Yes. Uh, hi, this is Yvonne Adumin. I am a civil engineer for this project and just wanted to add uh, one thing that the sidewalk on the east side is actually from a bike line, existing bike line, widened to eight feet. So it is the width of the bike line and also the crossing is eight feet and the uh, sidewalk continuing uh, and bypassing the uh, parking is also eight feet wide. So we did this with uh, bikers in mind. Thanks, Ivona. So another question about Becker's Lane being repaved is only going to be repaved from Manitou to El Paso. Um, 
Um, Alan asks if we have more questions about lighting. Is there a specific person we can talk to? Um, is that you, Jim? <laughs> um, if the community has questions about lighting, um, Alan, maybe you can email Karen about that. Uh, this all makes sense. Thank you for being mindful in your design. Please look at light options that don't, that point down. It seems like a place for easy budget friendly alternative that meets cold without fatiguing the neighborhood. Thanks again. Um, Mary says the bridge seems like a great improvement and Nita just feel this could have been a spot for a wetland type drainage with big canopy trees and perhaps a raised sidewalk such as the new Sherbert parking. Um, I mean, it's not a wetland, but it is uh, going to be a lot greener. Um, we have, um, I could show that section again. So we have ground cover and grasses and um, drought tolerant shrubs on uh, both sides now. So it's going to be a lot greener and their um, fall and winter interest too. So it's not just going to be a spring and summer thing. Um, yeah, I think we have time for one more question. A question from Judy. This design creates a wide swath of sidewalk and street that will facilitate increased vehicular speed. This design will not create a safer and pedestrian experience due to the natural increase in vehicular speed. I would request that the crosswalk that crosses be a four way stop for vehicles and walkers and cyclists. So right now I think each lane is. Each lane is around. Well, it was 10. Is it still 10 Dan or is it 12 now? Uh, could you repeat the question? Um, they would, requ would request that the crosswalk that crosses be four way stop for vehicles and walkers and cyclists. Um, so Judy's concerned about um, increased vehicular speed because of this improvement. So I'd say that Yvonne could probably speak to this better, but we're not changing the design speed along Becker's if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I don't and think we're widening the, the lanes. Yeah, and the roadway width is also unchanged. So um, unless people are accustomed to uh, knowing there are pedestrians in the road and driving slower than the minimum <laughs> with that expectation of the uh, um, occasional pedestrian on the road, uh, we should not see an increase in design speed. And again, the, the, the sight lanes are a lot better through there. so. Uh, yeah. Peds can see cars and cars can see peds much better. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything to add, Ivona? Uh, yes, I don't think uh, that the increase in the uh, speed uh, will be a concern, especially that also vertical alignment of this road is very interesting because it has uh, kind of steep slopes, at least on the south side, which do not make this road very comfortable for uh, driving. As well, at, especially at Manitou, this is a only three-way intersection where basically everybody who is turning into the backers, they need to slow down. So there is no uh, crossing which will be at the straight intersection, so no uh, increased speeds will be basically possible. Right, and, and we're going to be celebrating this new bridge with public art. So hopefully that would also help, um, depending on what it is, to, to slow down traffic and because the art's so beautiful. Um, OK, I think that's all the time we have. and. Um, if you have any other questions or would like to reach out, please uh, reach out to Karen or I. Um, I will, here's a link to this. 
web page that you can also uh, go back to and look at the slides if you'd like. Um, this is um, my email that I just put in the chat. And you can also add comments to this page. At the bottom here. Um, and we'll do our best to get back to you and incorporate anything um, as needed. And this is also recorded. So we're going to put this on Facebook and on the city website so you can um, have access to that too and share it with other neighbors. So um, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks, uh, Karen and Dole, Dan and Yvonne, to, um, answering these questions. Okay. Hope everyone has a good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night.